Thanks, now I'm joined here with my colleague Veronica Hernandez to talk to you guys about data and what that means and the impact in um, helping all of our causes here, first of all, measure representation, but really make an impact. For many years, we've been talking about lack of representation. Um, thankfully, as through some of the panels that you've heard this morning, that narrative has changed a bit. But there's really a big role that data can play to kind of help bring all of this to light. It's handing it over to Veronica. Yeah, I think uh, part of the inspiration for Grace Nell Nielsen is, is um, entering the space to measure representation. My background in college was stats and research, and I love data. And so much of what we learned was how to make research unbiased. But research is always biased because there is a point where we make a decision on what to measure. And what we're doing here is measuring what matters and we're measuring diversity within content. I love that. So as we have been measuring this for quite some time, let's talk about what some of these findings are and share that with the community. Yeah, so we all know that representation is important for all of the reasons that were talked about in previous panels. It makes people feel seen, it, it helps us all be more connected to each other, and it has real world impacts. However, there is a business case, and we're seeing the viewer trends evolve and demand for more diverse content. Um, especially among younger um, younger audiences. And we're also seeing a, a clear correlation between viewership and representation. We know that people are wanting to see more diverse content, especially as our identity consciousness as a society changes. Um, we are going to continue seeing this trend. So the question is, is being a big data company, being a research company, how are we trying to uh, make an impact? How is the data, uh, what is the data that we are measuring? You know, how does that come into play? And given how nuanced representation can be and not everyone um, has a single identity as we talk about, uh, what is the play, you know, how do we go about that with our data sets? Yeah, so um, you all may know Nielsen as an audience measurement company. Um, and we also have a company called Grace Notes, and Grace Note measures um, everything that is in well, that makes up content. Um, so by bringing these two data sets together into one product, we're able to see both what is in front of the camera and what is the impact that 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 has on audience engagement. So we're able to tell the stories about how representation impacts audiences. Um, our product inclusion analytics um, is used by media companies, advertisers, um, who are trying to make more informed decisions around their investments in inclusive content. One of the use cases is looking at where there is representation, where they're doing well, and then where there are gaps. One of the things that we're really proud of, and you mentioned intersectional identities, is that we're measuring race, ethnicity, gender, LGBTQ identity, and disability in an intersectional way. So our um, uh, we can look at what the representation is for uh, Latinos, or we can also look at what Afro-Latina queer women representation is on screen. And wherever we have audience data available, you're able to see the representation side by side with viewership so that you can get a more nuanced view of not just how much representation is on screen, but how is that representation um, resonating with the audience that's being represented within the content. And what we're seeing is um, that there are, there's a lot of cross-identity um, uh, affinity for watching um, uh, diverse content. So it's not just black folks watching black content. Everyone watches black content. Um, yeah, I would love to uh, echo that point right now. It's not that it's um, a specific identity group is watching that content. People are leading in of all audiences to engage with different representative groups of content. This is quite significant. So why don't you show us, Veronica, a little bit of the insights that we have for a few of the identity groups that we want to highlight and share some data with the group here. Yeah, some of what um, our data allows us to do is break apart the data to um, 
really understand and dive deep into where there are gaps and, and um, what's doing well. So one of the um, ways that we break out the data is by platform. So we can look at representation by broadcast, cable, and streaming. And when we look at Asian representation as an example, we see that streaming is the only platform that has Asian representation at parity or above with the Asian US population. Um, and this uh, shows us that streaming is winning for representation for Asians. However, we also have to take into account that the top 10 programs in the US are still majority broadcast and cable. So that still leaves a gap for how America sees Asians. Um, there's still a, a big gap there. Um, if we look at Hispanic representation, Latinos make up almost 20% of the U.S. population and are still very underrepresented. Across total TV, Latino representation sits at about 14%, so there's that 6% that gap. However, when we break it up by platform, we see that that representation is still largely driven by broadcast and Spanish language broadcast, so there's a huge gap. Um, and considering that it's almost 20% of the population, once you start looking at those intersectional identities, that falls apart even further. So um, this is one of the main use cases for how we can look at the data to look at where there are the gaps. Um, we also can layer gen uh, sorry, uh, genre data and then um, storyline data to break the data apart even further to uh, start understanding which context is winning and, and uh, where there are the biggest gaps. So a few um, ways that our data is being used, as Veronica was mentioned, is first of all, understanding the landscape. So where is identity showing up and where are there opportunity to invest more? We all know that there's a rise of fast happening. There is a happening because there's a lot of content and representation in particular that are not showing up on traditional media. So there's tons of opportunity and when there's white space or gaps, um, that's always a, uh, a new place for expansion. Uh, thankfully, we're seeing uh, a lot of increasing representation both uh, behind the scenes and in front of the camera by a lot of the networks and platforms, so we are making progress. Um, however, as we all talked about, there's also, you know, just having the content is one thing, but how does that show up to the consumer? And reaching those audiences is the biggest, um, you know, piece of the puzzle here, which is very difficult. So if you think about um, search and discovery experiences or any kind of experiences on screen, typically it's a genre. It doesn't get really that more um, complex than that. And so um, the genres could also just be very much about like a storyline. What we are trying to do and we're starting to see, thankfully on the screen, like Comcast here doing on their Xfinity platform, actually creating experiences that have uh, multi-layered <coughs> Uh, components of it, whether it's the subject or the storyline or the actual representation of the talent. I believe the example earlier was like Jodie Foster's never promoted during Pride Month. Um, these types of uh, you know, multi-layered ways of bringing out programming for represented representation is actually really important and something that we are working on to make a larger impact to make that part of the experience. We also believe, and are a big proponent, that this isn't a seasonal thing. There are certain months that this should be um, important. And so that is something that we're also working. And if the metadata is not there, and I think some people said earlier, we're not crazy about data or metadata or keywords. Ultimately, that is what drives search and discovery. And one of the things that we are trying to make it matter. A huge impact is actually have the right words and the metadata to be able to make this part of the uh, consumer experience. Yeah, I think it's, it, the, the metadata point is really important, especially when we think about um, diverse content and uh, not bucking, bucketing it into one bucket, right? Like uh, Latino content can also be representative of women and queer folks, and with, especially um, in, in our industry and with uh, more advertisement, uh, advertising supported uh, platforms. Advertisers are, who are looking to invest in diverse content, we want to uh, expand the content that they consider investing, right? Like it's, it's when we think about where to find Latino stories, 
Um, it goes beyond just the Spanish language networks. And when we think about investing in female representative content um, or black representative content, it's, it goes beyond the traditional channels that, that we think of. So we always love talking about uh, things that are great for business. So we, uh, we know that the consumer experiences have been very successful in uh, driving engagement with audiences. But in particular, the ad market is uh, starting to uh, change as well. So going from 2021 to 2022, ad age recorded increase in funding of 50% for diverse owned media. Um, that is a huge win, but diverse owned media is one thing. There's a lot of uh, media platforms and studios and networks that actually have a lot of diverse content that are not getting that funding. And so one of the areas in which we are trying to help is say, you know, um, the areas in which representative content does show up to help get the um, ad dollars there. So based on the inclusive ad spend report that we had done with Nielsen, we did see that in the latest 2023 numbers that was it 47%? Yes. 40%, uh, 47 of ad dollars across the top thousand brands are going to inclusive representative content. Uh, we would hope to see this being increased year over year, but again, uh, oftentimes it's not having that data to be able to um, identify or make those business decisions, and so that's where we continue to strive as Grace Note to help the media industry as a whole identify diverse and representative content for their day-to-day -day decisions. Yeah, I would say um, come talk to us about the data that we have available. I think as content creators um, looking to distribute your content, the data can be used to find networks that are championing diverse content, or you could go in and tell them like, hey, look, we have the data to show that you're actually really lacking in diverse content. This is especially why you should pay attention to the content that I'm producing. Or if you're a content distributor, having data that is um, identifying diverse content is going to accelerate and make it easier for you to make sure that the content that you are promoting on your platform is a bias, making sure that all of your carousel, your drama carousel, your comedy carousel has representation of across the board. I love that. So to conclude, we also want to mention uh, we recently with our studio system platform have launched a diversity spotlight. Our goal and aim here is to bring to the forefront um, uh, advocacy groups or other representative groups that are investing in uh, different productions or have uh, diverse talent to bring them at the forefront. Um, we understand our position on studio system is to help the creative development community and so we are doing our part as well. Um, so please come talk to us. Our contact information is up there. Whether it's something that we can help support you today or figure out a journey together, um, we're happy to continue to discuss and evolve this for everyone.